Hello you guys, welcome to my channel, Jesus Wants You. I'm the Watchman on the Wall, Nikki Pratt. Listen, let's get in the Word, let's get in the Word. Okay, let's get in the Word. How you guys doing? I hope you're having a blessed and wonderful day today, okay? I know you've never really seen me in my hair in a ponytail, but... Probably because I got a big old forehead. Yeah. Now I know why my mom didn't hardly put my hair in a ponytail because my forehead my forehead is about yay big. Yeah. So anyway. Enough with that. Enough with that. Alright, we are still in this bondage basically from freedom of ministers of Satan. They preach lies. They preach lies. And uh let me tell you, I, I did the, the video the other day about faith, um, and that's what um, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Basically, our faith is what <laughs> is at, at work and being tested, faith, and um, your belief and bondage and, and so much captivity and bondage is 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 going on right now and a lot of people that are in it they don't want to leave it they want to stay in Egypt but you can't stay in Egypt from the beginning the Lord brought people out of Egypt let's pray Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, we glorify you, we lift your name up. Father, Lord, we thank you for this day that you have given us. We thank you that your mercies are brand new each and every day. Father, we pray that hearts, Lord God, will be open and ready to receive. We bind every hindering and distracting spirit. Lord, we bind every heart of Pharaoh, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we pray, Lord God, that the people's ears will be inclined to hear, Lord God, thus removing their bondages and destroying their yokes as we boldly we declare that Satan is defeated. We are redeemed and Jesus is Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We are redeemed. Huh. Okay? We are redeemed. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. The devil is a liar. Okay. Hebrews chapter 7. That's where we're coming from tonight. Hebrews chapter 7. Amplified version. I want I got to make sure that you guys are hearing this okay if your heart let me tell you something if your heart I was street preaching this weekend and uh, I ran into two situations one was an agnostic and the other was Hebrew Israelite and let me tell you something the, the, the Hebrew Israelite they blah 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 about things that don't matter you know in the Bible it says don't be caught up in things of vain deceit, babblings, and, and uh, getting caught up in things like genealogies. And I'm paraphrasing that scripture. Um, you Google it, you'll see what I'm talking about. But that's all they care about. You know, and he said that uh, when we get to heaven, the only people going to be there was black people. That is not the character of my Lord and Savior. That is not the character of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you are one that believes that the only people that is going to be in heaven is black people, if you make it there, and I pray you do, you're going to be sadly mistaken. Sadly mistaken. I, that is the lie from the pits of hell, but that's one of them doctrines of devils. And that's what we're talking about. But see, I like these messages that the Lord has me in right now because they are for today. And it's all about what is going on right now. Right now. Hebrews chapter 7 is Melchizedek priesthood like Christ. Amplified version. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, met Abraham as he returned from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham gave a tenth of all the spoil he is first of all by the translation of his name king of righteousness and then he is also king of salem which means king of peace 
without any record of father or mother nor ancestral line, without any record of beginning of days, birth, nor ending of life, death, but having been, I just love how they really explain this, but having been made like the Son of God, he remains a priest without interruption and without successor. So what is this? I'm, I'm going to paraphrase this and, and show you what they're saying. This is saying Mechazedek was a type of Christ. Well, why do you say that, Nikki? Because, number one, it says that he was king of righteousness. That is how we're made righteous is through the king of kings, Jesus, the mighty Christ, okay? And then it says, which means, and then it says, he is also king of Salem, which means king of peace. Isn't our Lord and Savior the prince of peace? Hmm? Jehovah Shalom? Hmm? Okay. Um, verse 4, now pause and consider how great this man was to whom Abraham the patriarch gave a tenth of the spoils. It is true that those descendants of Levi who are charged with the priestly office are commanded in the law to collect tithes from the people, which means from their kinsmen. Though these have descended from Abraham, but this person, Mechazedek, who is not from their Levitical ancestry, received tithes from Abraham and blessed him who possessed the promises of God. Excuse me. Yet, it is beyond all dispute that the lesser person is always blessed by the greater one. Furthermore, here in the Levitical priesthood, tithes are received by men who are subject to death. But in that case, concerning Melchizedek, oh, I can really go in on this tithing thing, but that's a whole other video. Uh, tithes are received by men who are subject to death. But in that case, concerning Melchizedek, they are received by one. I just got a revelation. They are received by one of whom it is testified that he lives on perpetually. Okay, a person might even say that Levi, the father of the priestly tribe, himself who received tithes, paid tithes through Abraham, the father of all Israel and of all who believe. For Levi was still in the loins, unborn, of his forefather, Abraham, when Melchizedek met him, Abraham. Now, if perfection, here it is, really, really good. Now, if perfection, a perfect fellowship between God and the worshiper, had been attained through the Levitical priesthood, for under it, the people were given the law. What further need was there for another and different kind of priest to arise one in the manner of Melchizedek, rather than the one appointed to the order of Aaron. What is this all saying? If everything was subject by the law, under the law, under the Levitical priesthood, why did the better thing come? Why did the better person come? Christ. Why why did he come? Why did he get up on the cross? Why did he why did he die for our sins? Why? Okay. It says, What further need was there for another and a different kind of priest to arise? But this is it's talking about Melchizedek. What further need was it? Because he was a type of Christ, representing freedom, representing like uh, uh, representing Christ. Let, let me let me further read. Verse twelve. For when there is a change in the priesthood, there is of necessity a change of the law concerning the priesthood as well. For the one of whom these things are said belong not to the priestly line of Levi, but to another tribe from which no one has officiated or served at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord descended from the tribe of Judah, and Moses mentioned nothing about priests in connection with that tribe. 
And this becomes even more evident if another priest arises in the likeness of Melchizedek, which was Jesus the Christ, the high priest, who has become a priest, not on the basis of a physical and legal requirement in the law, preach word, preach. Okay? All right? Concerning his ancestry as a descendant of Levi, but on the basis of the power of an indestructible and endless life. For it is attested by God of him. You are Christ, are a priest forever, or watch this, according to the order of Melchizedek. What you say? For on the one hand, a former commandment is canceled because of its weakness, okay, and uselessness. What command? The laws is canceled. Okay? For on the one hand, a former commandment is canceled because of its weakness and uselessness, because of its inability to justify the sinner before God. For the law never made anything perfect, law keepers. Okay? No, I'm not sitting here saying we're not supposed to. The law, let me let me explain this like I had to explain this weekend. Let me explain this again for somebody. Be saying, oh, heresy, she preaching lies. No, hear me real good. The Ten Commandments, say this is a stop sign. This little brush here is a stop sign. Say this is a stop sign. The stop sign is a worldly law, okay? What happens if you pass that stop sign? A car can hit you because you ran the stop sign. You didn't stop. You didn't do what the, the sign said. So basically, the Ten Commandments are there to remind us what the sin is. What sin is. But the laws, okay, that you, those laws right there, are laws that God Almighty knew that we would fail to keep. That's why he sent the better, which was Jesus the Christ. And just as the, world, the word says we are made righteous, that's how we get to come to, to God. John 14, 6. The only way to the Father is through whom? See, I'm preaching the word. I'm talking the word. I'm teaching the word. It's not made up. So the laws that you're supposed to keep, there are love thy God with all thy heart, mind, and soul, and love thy neighbor like you love yourself. Them the laws that you can actually keep. The other laws, and I'm not saying that because he didn't come to what? Abolish the law. He came to fulfill the law. Meaning by those laws, we are made perfect before God. We are made perfect righteousness. We are made righteous through Christ by accepting him. You say, you know what? I, I lied today, Lord. I, forgive me. All right? Okay, so verse 18, for on the one hand, a former commandment is canceled because of his weakness and uselessness, because of his inability to justify the sinners before God. So who, who justifies the sinner before God? John 14, 6, Jesus Christ. Verse 19, for the law never made anything perfect. This is the Bible. While on the other hand, a better hope is introduced through which we now continually draw near to God. And indeed, it was not without the king, I'm sorry, without the taking of an oath that Christ was made priest. For those Levites who formerly became priests received their office without its, its being confirmed by the taking of an oath. But this one was designated with an oath through the one who said to him, the Lord has sworn, 
and will not change his mind of regret it. You, Christ, are a priest forever. And so because of the oath's greater strength and force, Jesus has become the certain guarantee, here it is, of a better covenant, okay, a more excellent and more advantageous agreement, one that will never be replaced or annulled. Okay, the former successive line of priests, on the other hand, on the one hand, existed in greater numbers because they were each prevented by death from continuing perpetually in office. But on the other hand, did I read that twice? I did. Jesus holds his priesthood permanently and without change because he lives on forever. Therefore, he is able also to save forever, completely, perfectly, for eternity. Those who come to God through him, I just got through saying it, since he always lives to intercede and intervene on their behalf with God, it was fitting for us to have such a high priest perfectly adapted to our needs holy, blameless, unstained by sin, separated from sinners, and exalted high, higher than the heavens, who has no day-by-day -day need like those high priests to offer sacrifices, first of all, for his own personal sins, and then for those of the people, because he met all the requirements and did this once for all when he offered up himself as a willing sacrifice. Jesus the Christ was their sacrificial lamb. For the law appoints men as high priests who are weak, frail, sinful, dying men. But the word of the oath of God, which came after the institution of the law, permanently appoints as a priest, a son who has been made perfect forever. You know what else? Uh, let me tell you this. The little, the, the Hebrew Israelite that I was talking to this weekend, he said, I was explaining the message of the cross to him. And I was explaining the law and basically, um, you know, telling him some of the stuff I've told you guys. And he said, you know what? I don't understand all that. All that stuff you're saying, I don't understand it. It's, 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 he said, it's confusing to me. I don't understand. Immediately a scripture come in my head. It says, that which is spiritual, the natural man don't understand. He sees it as foolishness. That's scripture. It's foolishness unto him. That which is spiritual, the natural man don't understand. If you're not getting this, I just read this. Some of the stuff I said before I even read it is spiritual. If you're on, and, and what causes us not to hear or to get it is a hardened heart. The Lord Jesus gave us a picture of that through Pharaoh. Isn't there some in the prayer? I bind Pharaoh's heart. Mm, mm hmm. All right. So in the study Bible, let me read some things to you. This broken down. Okay. It's good. It's good. It says the law was not intended to save people or to make them perfect. But how many times have I had people come to me and say, "Oh, I, I keep the, I keep the Sabbath, I keep the law." Yeah, but you break all the others. So if you break one, the Bible says you have broke them all. Hmm. Okay. It says the law was not intended to save people or to make them perfect, but to point out sin. That's what I was explaining with the brush. sign is a picture of the law. Let you know what sin is. Woo! Come on with it. Lord, come on with it. All right. And to point 
toward Christ, the Savior. Just what I was saying. Salvation comes through Christ. I mean, it's like I'm saying it before. This is good. Whose sacrifice brings forgiveness for our sins, being ethical, working diligently to help others, and giving to charitable causes are all commendable. But all of our good deeds cannot save us or make us right with God. I don't care how much you keep the Sabbath. You don't treat your brother or sister right. You can't love thy neighbor. Sorry. Okay, I don't care how much you think you got it together because you keep the Sabbath or you cover your head when you... Help, Lord, help. All right. Uh, watch this. Because of the sacrificial system, the Israelites were generally aware that sin cost someone something and that they themselves were sinful. Many people take Christ's work on the cross for granted. They don't realize how costly it was for Jesus to secure our forgiveness. It cost him his life and painful, temporary separation from his father. Because Jesus died once for all, he brought the sacrificial system to an end. He forgave sins, past, present, and future. The Jews did not need to go back to the old system because Christ, the perfect sacrifice, completed the work of the redemption. You don't have to look for another way to have your sins forgiven. Christ was the final sacrifice for you. All right? So, um, wow. Hebrews 7, verse 26. Why did I have that highlighted? Let me read that in the King James now. Hebrews 7, verse 26. For such an high priest became us. Now I know why I highlighted it. Who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. That's how we're made blameless and holy. Through, a, through him. We'll never get it right. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not condoning sin. I'm not saying, you know, it, it sounds like, you know, the Pharisees would say, well, what's the point in trying to, come on now, don't be crazy. Come on, don't be crazy. They don't give you the right. That's why the, the, they don't give you the right to go and check, check up sex before marriage. Don't give us the right to do that. Now you now you want to sin willingly, knowingly. There's some dangerous stuff. We're in the wrong hour for that. And you know, it, all of these people <laughs> that the Lord had me to warn, that shacking, sex, fornicating, sex before marriage type stuff, Ain't none of them, none of them. Listen, none of them doing what the Lord would want them to do. Won't do it. Some people know that these men are not marriage material. Why be there? Why? Why would you risk your life, your soul, brother? It ain't worth it. I don't care how good he is in bed. Y'all know me. I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing for nobody. 
See, you got preachers, ministers that will have preach stuff. They sit up in these pulpits and they hold back the word for whatever reason. The Bible says, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. It's not my word. It's his word. It's not my word. He says, open your mouth and I'll fill it. Shacking is a sin all day. We living in the wrong time and hour for people to be playing with their soul like that. That's dangerous. You might as well hold a gun to your head with a few bullets in the chamber and spin around and play Russian roulette. It's dangerous. We can't do that. We can, you cannot allow yourself to do that. The Lord knows my heart. The Lord loves everybody. He does. He's not compromising. He's not. He does. He do love you. He do. He said it is his will that no man should perish. Don't make his death and dying on the cross and going through all that in vain. Do the right thing. You want to lay up and shack up with a man? Do the right thing. Get married. Marry him. It's better to marry than to burn. And that's burn with passion. But I'm going to say this. Is also better to marry than the burning hell too. Wow. Ministers of Satan. <laughs> Let me tell you what they would tell you about the shack and stuff. They would tell you, oh, you know. We all did it in the past. One day that man will marry you. You just stay praying. That's what you do. Ministers of, of Satan will say, you just stay praying, sister. You just stay praying, brother. Oh, talk to the Lord. Meanwhile, you still shacking. And you just keep coming to church and you do what you're supposed to do. You know, you pay your tithes because the Lord is a forgiving Lord. And he'll forgive you. He knows our hearts. See, it's going to be watered down, half truth, serpent split tongue speaking. It's going to be half the word, half truth, just, just watered down. It ain't going to be pure, straight to the core of, of, of the situation. That's the minister of Satan. He, he, he going to say whatever he know that's going to make you feel good while you are continuing in your sin. And you know, and allow, and then you come back and you sit up on that same front row each time. Still living that way. Been going to church for, for five years. Is he preaching the word? Because if you continue to live in sin and somebody, and you reading your word, or are you reading your word? Or is he really preaching the word? Because if you come in that word, oh, the word is light. It's going to shine through darkness and it will convict you of some things that you're doing or have done. It's going to convict you of those, that fornication, sin that you're in. It, it will convict you. And, you, and you gonna, you'll be on that boyfriend. Look, you will say this. You know what? I can't do this no more. You know, you want to lay here and pretend to be married? I can't do it no more. You're going to have to go. 
If you don't leave, I'm going to have to leave. One of us got to go. Because this ain't right. A real minister of the Lord is going to tell you the truth. The truth hurts, but the truth also sets you free. Because who the Son sets free, free, through his word. I was trying to say through his word and free at the same time and said three. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. We can't be playing. Ain't no time for that. Y'all see all this stuff going on around this world? There's no time for playing. There's no time sitting under a minister of Satan who's going to tell you what you want to hear. A lot of you are separated from these no good men. And you're contemplating going back. Don't do that. Don't go back to Egypt. Don't go back to Sodom. And Gomorrah, don't do it. Move forward. Don't look backward. Leave him where he is. Now watch this. I'm not going to sugarcoat. I don't care what he's doing and how he do in the bedroom. It is not worth your soul in eternity. That fire is unquenchable. Wow, 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 wow. All right. So, we're going to move in and keep moving on tomorrow. I hope you guys have been blessed by this. I love you guys. See you tomorrow.